Welcome to another video. As a calculus student, you will someday come across this if you do integration, especially if you take calculus 2. And if you go beyond calculus 2 into calculus 3 or partial or differential equations, this is going to be your friend because it's going to come up. So, what strategy should you use in each case because they are completely different? So I'm going to go through all four of them. I may have to do a special video for this one, but we'll see when we get there. Let's get into the video. If you're just beginning calculus, you might think the first time you see this problem, you're going to do a U substitution. But as soon as you attempt it, you're going to realize that's not going to work because if you make this your u, if you make e to the x your u, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It does not contain x. And if you make x your u, the derivative of x is 1. It is not x. So definitely you cannot do u substitution. It has to be integration by parts. You have to take 1 as what you want to differentiate and the other as what you want to integrate. How do you decide which one to integrate? This is my recommendation. Anytime you see e to the x in a product that is to be integrated, always choose to integrate e to the x because it's the easiest thing to integrate because it's the same. So let's try the integration by parts formula and we're going to use it for this and move on. du. So we're going to take this as u and take this as dv. Okay, so let's finish this because we're going to the more interesting ones. Okay, integration by parts, don't forget, ibp. So we're going to say let u be equal to x. And if you differentiate du, you have du will be dx. And we're done. And we're also going to claim that our dv is going to be e to the x dv equals e to the x. That means v will be the, the integral of this, which is just e to the x. So it's always good for you to have this. So um, dv is going to be e to the x dx rather. And then you have, um, yeah, that's what you have. So whew, apply the formula. So remember, our assumption is that what we have as the problem is u dv. So now we're going to find our answers. We're going to say the integral of x e to the x dx is equal to u times v. u times v is x times e to the x. So it's x e to the x minus the integral of v du v times du. No, v times du is e to the x dx. Okay, so this is x e to the x minus Ta -da -da. What's the integral of e to the x dx? It's just e to the x. That's why I said choose it to integrate e to the x. And we have plus c. Now you can choose to factor out e to the x, but I just want you to see what it looks like. And that's it. We're done with number one. This number two problem is a typical example given by teachers when teaching u substitution. So it is a calculus one level difficulty kind of problem. This is calculus two. Now this is calculus one because that's where you're introduced to integration and that first integration technique. Now here, we know that the derivative of this is x. So when we do a u substitution, we can get rid of x and dx and replace it. And we have a very simple expression. So we can go and say that Actually, I like to rewrite it because I'm trying to get rid of x dx. So I'm going to rewrite this as e to the x squared times x dx. Put it that way. So now I can do my u substitution. Strategy I'm using is u sub. I'm going to say let u be equal to x squared. So I know that du will be equal to 2x dx. So this is the x dx I'm looking for. So I can as well divide both sides by 2 so that I write this as du over 2 or I can write it as half du 
Um, let's just write it here. One half of du is equal to x dx. So what happens is we're going to go here and we write this integral like this. It's going to be e to the, remember, u is x squared, so I'm just going to write u. And now instead of writing x dx, I'm going to write half du. But I know I can move this back here, right? So this is the same thing as one half times the integral of e to the u du. And if I integrate this, what do I get? Just e to the u, one half e to the u plus c. Now don't leave your answer this way because remember this was in terms of x. So go replace u with x squared and that's your answer. This is the same thing as one half of e to the x squared plus c. And this is the second integral. It's about to get very interesting when we get to the third one. Now give it a shot before you continue watching while I take care of this board. Okay, here is number three. The first strategy we had will not work. The one we did this for this one. Remember I told you take e to the x and integrate it. The problem with that is as long as this is not e to a linear function, you don't know how to integrate it. So you don't know how to integrate e to the x squared or x cubed or x whatever. You don't know how to integrate that. So don't make a move. Okay, now can we try and do a u substitution? If we let this be u, the derivative of u squared is u, but this is not u. This is even bigger. I mean, this just derivative of x squared is x, and this is not x. This is even bigger than x. So, I forgot the juice of it. We have to think of something to do. Now, whenever you have a polynomial multiplying e to the anything, any exponential function, Whatever strategy you see in this video is what you would apply. You have to find a modified version of it, and that's what we're going to do. So see what I'm going to say. If I make x squared my u, the derivative of it has to be x. So I must be able to get x dx. Can I split this? Looks like I can split this. So I can write this as the integral of x squared e to the x squared times x dx. And that's it. So now I can do u substitution. And in my u sub, I'm going to say let u be x squared so that du is equal to x, 2x dx, um, equals 2x dx, and then one half of du, hey, come on, will be equal to x dx. So that's the hardest part. Once you've done this before, when you see it another time, you can always know what strategy you're going to employ. So now, x dx is this guy, and this is u, this is u, so what we have here is going to be the integral of u e to the u times x dx is now one half du. So what do we get? This is the same thing as one half of u e to the u du integrated. Well, We've seen this before, remember? That's question number one. It's just now in terms of you. So you see, once you know the first one, we can get the answer to this. Now I'm not gonna do the work this out because we already know what the answer is. This is one half multiplied by this integral. And this integral is u e to the u minus e to the u, right? Plus c. But what did we say u was? I should have written that here. Okay, I'm going to write the answer here in the middle. Okay, so what would this be? This is just going to be 
pull this up here. So this is going to be one half of what was u again, x squared. So it's going to be one half of x squared e to the x squared minus e to the x squared plus c. That is the answer to this integral. Let's go. I was about to end the video, then I realized that this guy is still here. <laughs> so if you're taking calculus too, you will need something extra to be able to do this, and it's called the error function. If you don't know what that means, it means don't try to do this, don't waste your time trying to do this one because um, it cannot be done using all basic techniques that you learned in calculus too. So I might just give you the answer to this. It is because you get this a lot in differential equations, especially when you do you no know, partial differential equations, not just differential equations, not ordinary differential equations, but partial differential equations, you're going to get a lot of error function problems that you have to have things uh, memorized. So if you integrate this, you're going to end up with, I'm just going to put the answer here. This is going to be one half of x e to the x squared minus one fourth of the square root. Of, in fact, let me write it this way. The square root of pi multiplied by the error function. The error function of x plus c. Let's not forget plus c. Okay, so this is the error function. It's, it's written as earthy, or some just say earth. Okay, so um, yeah, this looks wicked, right? Even if you don't get this, I'll make a video for it to show you what the error fun what the error function is and how to use it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye bye.